Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to Copper Jacket TV. So today I want to give you guys an update to a video that I made just last Friday talking about a hearing that was scheduled for Rody v. Bonta, which is a case that challenges California's ammunition restrictions under Prop 63. We're talking about the background checks, the not being able to ship to your home, uh, going through a licensed vendor, the importation regulations, and everything that surrounds that. Now the hearing was set for just yesterday, July 17th, in front of Judge Roger T. Benitez, and that hearing was really interesting. As a matter of fact, Judge Benitez had a lot of eye-opening things to say and a lot of things that led me to believe that he may issue a summary judgment in this case or at minimum provide an injunction and give some people in California the relief that they have been waiting for. So let's go ahead and talk about what was said kind of on both sides here and and, and some of the stuff that Judge Benitez said that led me to believe that we're going to see a win in Rota v. Bonta. Hey, real quick, I just want to mention that more than half the people that watch these videos are not actually subscribed. If you like Second Amendment content, you want to know what's going on around you, hit that little subscribe button. It's free, but it helps me out quite a bit. And sometimes people aren't seeing the videos they want to see in their thread, so make sure you hit that little alarm bell. That'll let you know when new content comes out. I put Second Amendment content out pretty much daily. So again, make sure you subscribe. A like would be appreciated. And hit that little bell notification. Let's get to it. Now, I'm just going to quickly summarize California's arguments because they're really not arguments at all. I mean, they don't really even have that much relevance to the case at hand but California seems to be recycling them between all of these 2A cases to see whether or not they will stick. I've heard the same or similar arguments in Duncan and in Miller and now in Rhodey, and they're trying to use a historical analog, especially a, a woke state like California, is trying to use a historical analog from the slave era and something that was imposed on a specific you know, class of people and uh, these restrictions on that class of people is what California's using for their argument to say, hey, look, this is our historical analog. Uh, it existed back then, so we can do it now. But in reality, it's more or less like indirect. And to be honest with you, it was unconstitutional back then, so it remains unconstitutional now. But nonetheless, California continues to use it. So again, they're, they're using what I would consider to be a, a racist argument uh, in order to uphold restrictions on everybody else today. And it's, it's kind of mind-blowing, honestly, when you hear it. But uh, it's something that mostly goes in one ear, Judge Benitez, and then out the other. So let me go ahead and tell you guys what his responses were. Now, in my opinion, the most interesting part of this entire hearing actually came from Judge Benitez himself, where he realized that this law is actually worse than he even thought it was. Thanks to the uh, lawyers for the plaintiffs, Judge Benitez actually took a step back. So what happened was he was recalling a story where he, would, he used to go bird hunting in Arizona. And while he was there, he would pick up extra ammunition. Now, he was saying under this law, under Prop 63, he would have to then bring the ammunition back into California and then take it to a vendor or FFL and do a background check. And that's when the lawyers for the plaintiffs stood up and stepped in and said, actually, no, that's, that's not how it works. It's a lot worse than that. As a matter of fact, if you wanted to do it the right way, you would have had to stay in Arizona you would have had to ship whatever you bought in Arizona to a vendor or FFL. Then you would have had to drive into California, gone to that vendor or FFL, undergone your background check, and then once you've paid your fee and gone through that, then you'd be able to continue on home with whatever it is you got in Arizona. And so originally, Benitez thought he could drive into the state with it and just simply take it to a vendor for a background check. And he found out that's not the case. There is a lot more to it. You cannot bring it into the state, uh, especially over a specific number. So I think he was taken back by that. And I think that made uh, a big impression on him as to how you know, terrible this law actually is. Now, obviously, that realization was a big plus for us, right? But there were also some downsides, like Benitez gave the state one month to get historical declarations. So they have historians that are working for them. They want to give their expert declarations Benitez gave them one month to do that. And I think basically he's covering his tracks here on all of his bases so that if this does end up at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, he could say he has basically the complete case in front of him. So uh, when he writes his order on this, he'll be able to say everything, you know, all of his bases were covered essentially. Now, whether or not the plaintiffs even had standing was actually a big portion of this hearing. As I mentioned in the video Friday, that was one of the bullet points that Benitez wanted to talk about. So Standing was a very important one. The state is basically saying that the plaintiffs don't have standing and the plaintiffs are saying they do have standing because of out of state purchases and people uh, having wait times and the fees and everything else. So 
the plaintiffs are saying they have standing. California is saying they don't. But in, in reality, it's very clear to see that the plaintiffs do have standing in this case. And it seemed like Judge Benitez understood that as well. Now, from what I hear, the CRPA is actually going to have notes on this hearing if you want to know more about it. Uh, when or if they do actually post those notes, I'll put a link down below so you guys can check it out if you want to know more. But again, it seemed like Benitez wasn't falling for California again. Uh, it seems like he understood that this is a clear violation of people's Second Amendment rights and the Second Amendment is implicated in what California is doing here and that the historical analogs that California are using are just not even relevant really. So there, it, it seems like we're going to get a win out of this, but now we have to wait a month. That's kind of where the bummer comes in, right? So we have to wait for Californians historic historians to give their expert declaration on this, and then we'll see where it goes from there. But at minimum, we're going to have to wait another month on this one. So we'll see what happens. But again, it looks very promising and it's in front of a judge that I think is going to be issuing some decisions that's going to have California politicians pretty upset in the near future. So we'll be waiting for those and uh, I, I can't wait to see the look on California politicians face when they actually come down. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. You guys have a great day.